Inside of our bodies are billions of bacteria, most of them harmless to humans. One of these bacteria is called Neisseria meningitidis. It lives in our noses. But sometimes something unusual happens. The bacteria can get into the blood and travel up into the brain, killing both itself and the person in just a few hours. It can actually cross from our nose into our blood and then goes into our brain and causes something called meningitis. You can get the disease throughout the ages. However, the most common one are actually infants when they are very young and also people who live in crowded conditions like daycare centres and also in old folks' home and these kind of places. The reason behind these bacterium suddenly changing from being benign to deadly, no one can explain. But biologist Edmund Lowe is one of the scientists trying to solve this mystery. We know how the bacteria cause the final disease. It causes meningitis. That is uh, not something novel and trivial anymore. However, that we still don't really fully understand why a relatively, well, not dangerous bacteria that lives inside your nose could actually suddenly turn so dangerous and it can kill you within a couple of hours to half a day. And then by knowing the mechanism of how it turns from good to bad, we can perhaps find mechanism that we can actually block. So to maintain the bacteria always good, but not to the bad bacteria. So that is one of our main goal. So this is an, uh, an old microscope that I actually got in an auction. Actually, I got it last year. That Edmund Lowe would become a scientist, specifically a biologist, was no great surprise, either for himself or those around him. I see actually functioning. Actually he received his first microscope when he was a young boy. Went to the garden to try to look for small little insects, looking for plants, and then I can put under the microscope and actually can see them in detail, the legs of these insects and how do they live and the flowers, the, the basically the physical properties of these insects were fascinating. Eventually, Edmund landed in northern Sweden, where he studied biomedicine at Umeå University. And that's where he began to take an interest in RNA the chemical relative of DNA molecules, which can play an important role in the fight against meningitis. The bacteria has to adapt very quickly, or else they will be killed by our immune system. And one of these mechanisms that they can adapt and change very quickly is to produce these, what we call, small RNA. And when they produce these, these small RNAs have many effects, and then they directly can actually control a lot of these mechanisms, especially in protecting the bacteria. Somewhere hidden in our genome lies the answer to the question that Edmund and his team are looking for. Why bacteria that normally live peacefully in the nose will suddenly build a capsule to protect it from the body's immune system? It is therefore important to carefully study the bacteria to identify which individual or group of RNA molecules are involved in that process. This is complicated, time-consuming, and most importantly, dangerous work because the bacterium is highly contagious. The gloves will never come back out into here because now the, because he has handled with bacteria and so on already. Once we found our candidate, we would actually do the experiment in the lab. If you see here, there are these like purple uh, solution bottles which contains vircon. It's a disinfectant that you actually pour it onto the bacteria to make sure that you kill the bacteria. So these are a lot of precautions. That we have. Once uh, the bacteria is grown, we have found different conditions to stimulate these small RNAs. We would actually first kill the bacteria and then we isolate the RNA from these bacteria. And once the RNA is isolated, we can then finally take our samples out from the lab to actually visualize, to quantify, and also to study the mechanism of these RNAs. In the lab, researchers try to simulate the environment of the nose that the bacteria encounter. They examine how different variables cause different types of small RNA to react. 
One factor that they've looked at is temperature. The dotted lines here, the black one, uh, it could be influenza or it could be cold-related uh, illnesses. But if you see the meningitis cases, it peaks together with the influenza. You can imagine the bacteria is living inside our nose, so it goes through quite a lot of the physical uh, stress factors that we humans also go through as well. That we discover that an RNA sends small temperature changes in Neisseria that is able to protect the bacteria from being killed from the immune system. And this small RNA is the one that controls the capsule production. The task which Edmund and his team are currently carrying out is the identification of as many RNA types as possible. And despite the many discoveries they have already made, there are still several question marks. So we are basically now uh, touching just the tip of the iceberg. So we still do not know the whole map of small RNAs, what stress factors are triggering these uh, small RNAs and what are they doing. So the easy thing to say is that it's very easy to find small RNAs. But to find out what these small RNAs are doing, that is the most challenging uh, question. The equipment the scientists are using today is essentially the same as the ones used in the 1970s when Edmund got his first microscope. His curiosity is the same as it was then, but now his knowledge base is much greater. And Edmund does have a clear idea of how his research should be able to fight the bacteria in reality. We could actually design drugs that is able to hopefully bind to these small RNAs to block them so that they do not express whatever proteins there are or factors that they are supposed to be producing. Therefore, it cannot produce the capsule and therefore it cannot cause, hopefully cannot cause disease.